What's up guys, it's Blaze here and let's continue on with our UI series, part of the series anyway. Um, but before we get started, we are going to take a brief detour. So I completely forgot about it in the theory section. So I need to add this in now. What we're going to do for this video is actually prep our game to get uh, the UI going as well as fix some uh, UI stuff that our units will suffer from if we don't fix it now. So let's fix this now as well as getting that prep stuff done here. So if you're looking for the button video, it's going to come after this one. So just bear with me for that one. I need to do this because my OCD won't let me proceed without doing this. So let's get this section done first and then we'll get into, we'll get back into the uh, what we said we would do in the theory video. Actually, truth be told, we're going to do some of that in this right now. Specifically, if we go into our room, we're going to set up our cameras here. So the first thing that we're going to do is, I tested this out before with this particular build of the project. And what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to change my room size to 640 by 360. Now in the theory video, I did say that it was going to be 480 by 360. That's a mistake. Um, because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera to be uh, 1280 by 720. So essentially a 720p um, viewing angle, view size, viewport size. But of course, with the goal of this section being UI, you can scale your UI to be whatever size you want and the buttons will appear as intended on the screen. So just put that in there, get that all there. All right, so everything's in the room now, but we still need to actually activate our viewports and cameras. So the first thing that we need is to enable the viewports. And then for viewport zero, it's very important that you use viewport zero um, mainly because the code that I wrote out is going to be for viewport zero specifically. And we're going to turn it on visible, or we're going to make it visible. And of course you can see if you've worked with viewports before, um, this should be familiar to you. But for those who aren't familiar, this one is for you guys. So what we're going to do is this camera, I want this camera to be the same size as the room so that the units themselves are in the right position. They're not too oversized and they're not too cramped in. But to prove a point, let me play the game as it is right now. And you'll see that everything is kind of shoved into this top left corner. We don't want that. We want to use the whole space here. And so to do that, basically we're going to take the camera properties and we're going to make the width and the height the same as the width and height of the room itself. So this one will be 640 and the height itself will be 360. All right, so that's done. Um, let's play the game and I'll show you, you'll be able to see the difference, right? So now everything looks, well, basically how I tested it before, but you can see here that our HP bars are out of place. So we need to fix that. And that's going to be the focus of this video right here. Now, I, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but uh, what we're going to do for our UI system is actually a very simplified version of Pixelated Pope's uh, solution to UIs in GMS2. Um, we're only taking the most basic stuff from that video and a link to the original will be in the description as well as the pinned comment. So check that out there. I'm also going to leave it as a card in the top corner. So you can go check that out when you have time, or maybe you can pause the video now and go check, check it out. So uh, that's up to you. But in any case, let's keep going. What we're going to do is we are going to add in two, no, four new macros. Okay. So I'll, jump cut to when I finish writing it out and then I'll explain it a little bit more in depth. Okay, so here are those four new macros and it has 
only to do with the UI itself. There's no other functionality for this. So the first one is we are going to get the camera width using the camera get view width um, function. And of course, we're going to use camera zero because that's the one that we have activated. Same thing with the height, similar function, except this time we're getting the height of the camera view. And then here we have display scale X and display scale Y. What are these two? These are the actual dimensions of the viewport itself, right? And we're going to divide that by the camera width and camera height, which are the other two macros up top. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to get the, the space of the GUI items as world space. Okay, so there are two kinds of spaces. Um, let me open up the room real quick. Everything that you see in the world here, in the game world, that is world space. But things like UI doesn't or doesn't normally conform to the world space itself. So imagine you could have a massive room, but you only want to show one part of it, right? Let's say in a platformer. In a platformer game like Super Mario, you'd load up the whole world, especially with computers nowadays, and your camera will only render in the bits that are required. Right? And of course, that UI will render all that, the timer, the how much health you have and stuff like that, right? how many coins you have. That's essentially going to be limited to the space here inside the camera. Now, for us, for a game like what we're making, it's not going to be obvious, but uh, we need our objects to be at the right position. right? We need to convert world space to GUI space, and that's what this function that's what this function here does, or rather what it will do. Okay, so let's close that off real quick. And let's go back here. All right, so for our parent unit, the next thing that we're going to do is going to draw GUI. All right, we have these two, these four macros now, and we are using them. I don't know why I get a warning for that because I'm using it down here. Anyway, that doesn't matter. What matters is we are going to add in functions now that will convert, that will allow us to use all of this and scale those, fix those UI problems that we had here in the draw GUI. So once again, I'm going to jump cut to after and then we'll go through it line by line. Okay, so we're done with that now. Let's start from the top here. So CX, we are going to get the position, the X position of the camera. Similarly, we're going to get the Y position of the camera as well with this second line. All right, line three, we are now converting the world space to GUI space right here, right? And we're multi that's where this multiply scale X and scale Y come from. So we're taking the X position of the camera, we're converting it to GUI space, and we're doing the same with the Y position. We're taking the Y position, we're converting it to GUI space as well. So, Let's fix these draw sprite and draw sprite parts by taking, instead of X and Y, we're gonna make it X, X, and Y, Y. Similarly down here, we'll go X, X, and Y, Y down there as well. So let's save that out, play the game. All right, there we go. <laughs> Everything's fixed. The health bar is now above the character's head again. Um, if you guys have smaller sprites, it'll probably be easier to see, uh, but yeah, it works, right? We've fixed our UI problems. Let's see what happens if we take this off and make it, just leave it as X and Y. I'll show you what will happen. All right, so the backing here, it's gone back to its original position because we actually need to get the, the X position, the unit's X position, and turn it into GUI space, okay? So that's essentially what all of this code was about, is fixing and prepping our project to draw things correctly. Okay, so, whew, okay, that satisfies my OCD. I'll leave it here so that the next section will be purely about implementing the parent button and getting things ready for doing things like attack and defending and of course, unit targeting, which is something that everybody is looking forward to, I hope. Um, but thank you very much for watching. If you guys haven't already, 
please do like and subscribe to the channel. If you guys are interested in me, if you guys want me to cover any particular topic, it doesn't have to be turn-based RPGs. It can be something else entirely. I know somebody suggested um, expanding a little more in the hack and slash uh, video that I made. So if you guys want me to do something else, you guys have any suggestions, then please do leave them in the comments section below. Uh, again, thank you guys very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.